love a lot of the home decor at Pottery Barn, but I don't always love the prices. I want to create a romantic Valentine's Day inspired look in our dining room, and I'm going to try to DIY some Pottery Barn inspired pieces with items that I have on hand. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. Let's get started. Our dining room could definitely use some love. We haven't really given it a good clean since Christmas time and we use it for crafts and for dining. We have our coffee station here. So I'm gonna give it a nice good clean. I'm also going to swap out the chairs that were in here for these antique ones that my mom had left here at our house. I wanted to try out some black chairs here and I think these look really great. Yes, we still have our Christmas tree up and I know about 10% of you are gonna think this is weird because I asked this question on Instagram stories. We're gonna keep this tree up for the Valentine's season. I pulled my girls, I asked them, hey, do you wanna keep this tree up and change it into a Valentine's Day tree? And they all loved that idea. So for our family, we're gonna keep it up and I'm gonna add a few little things to make it a little more seasonal for Valentine's Day. Why not? For this Valentine's Day themed tree, I'm using some DIY fabric flowers that I made several years ago. I'll leave the DIY for those down in the description box below. I basically cut up some scrap fabric into petal shapes, used a lighter to curl the edges of the fabric, and used hot glue to place those around a styrofoam ball. I'm also using some Dollarama heart plaques that I got a couple years ago. Dollarama is a dollar store here in Canada. And I'm also using some feathers that I used for a Christmas theme a few years ago as well. I'm going to keep this tree nice and subtle, just some nice romantic touches for Valentine's Day. This look reminds me a lot of my shabby chic sort of era a few years ago and I still love this romantic inspired look and I think it is so beautiful. I saw this beautiful candle tray as a centerpiece on the Pottery Barn website. I think if you were to buy all of these pieces from Pottery Barn you could spend hundreds of dollars on this centerpiece idea but I'm going to recreate it using items I have on hand. I'm starting with this metallic tray, but you could use any sort of tray for this idea. Metal, plastic, wood. You can even buy a plastic one from the Dollar Tree, spray paint it a metallic color. And then I loved the idea of using the mercury glass inspired tea light holders on this tray. So these pink colored ones were actually from Dollar Tree a few years ago. I think they still have them and they're this beautiful rose color and they look fabulous on this tray. I'm also going to use some silver ones that I got from I think A Floral a few years ago. I'll make sure to link to similar items that I'm using today down in the description box below. And I'm also using some vintage pink glassware and I'm placing some tea lights in all of these holders. Tea lights you can also find at the dollar store for $1.25 for a pack. So you could find all of these elements at a dollar store or a thrift store. I'm also reusing some of my old Christmas greenery clippings in the tray. So I'm using some that aren't, I feel, too Christmassy. So just some sparkly cedar branches and some little pine branches and placing those throughout the tray as well. Now I'm lighting up all the candles and I love this magical candle centerpiece. Pottery Barns was hundreds of dollars if you put all of those elements together. And this one I created using items that I already had on hand. But if you were to buy all of these items from the thrift store, from the dollar store, you could make the centerpiece for less than $20 Canadian. I saw this heart-shaped Sherpa pillow at Pottery Barn. The pillow there is $50, but I wanna try to recreate it for way less than that using items that I have on hand. I'm gonna use this faux for fabric. It's a little fluffier, actually a lot fluffier than the Pottery Barn one, but I already had it on hand and I love a good fluffy pillow. I also found a scrap of cotton polyester blend fabric in the same color, the soft white, as the faux fur. I'm creating a heart shaped pattern using two pieces of paper. I'm just drawing a half heart shape on one of them with a pencil until I like the shape and then I'm cutting it out. Don't forget that you want to leave a half inch seam allowance if you're making this pillow too. So make your pattern a half inch larger than you want your finished pillow to be. After I cut the pattern out, now I'm taping the two sides of the heart together and I'm laying that pattern on the faux fur fabric. Now I'm pinning the pattern onto the fabric and cutting it out with some fabric scissors. 
When you're cutting faux fur, just remember to cut the backing only rather than the fur and that's going to keep the integrity of that faux fur and make the pillow look really good in the end. I'm also cutting the heart shape from the cotton polyester backing fabric. Now I'm taking the two pieces of fabric and placing them right side together and pinning them in place. So you can sew this together with a sewing machine. You could sew it by hand, or you could even use hot glue if you want. If you want to use the hot glue option, just make sure to opt for a glue like the Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. I find that works really well to hold fabrics together. I'm using my sewing machine to sew a half inch all the way around the pillow. However, I am leaving about a four to five inch opening. Once everything is sewn, I'm clipping all of those curves to make sure that the pillow lies properly. I am pulling the pillow right side out and then I'm stuffing it with some fiber fill. What I like to do is I like to reuse the filling from old pillows that maybe I'm not using anymore. You could even use the filling from thrifted pillows as well putting that into the pillow form, and then I'm just taking a needle and thread and sewing that hole up at the end. I love how this turned out. It is so fluffy. It's such a great little accent pillow for our dining room settee. So I made this for $0. However, if you had to buy all of the supplies for this pillow, Pottery Barns was $50, but I think you could make this for less than $20 Canadian. Now let's make some romantic artwork inspired by this Pottery Barn artwork. This one is $350, so I think we could make something similar for a lot cheaper. For this DIY, I'm actually using an old wooden canvas that I had to make a Valentine's themed DIY a couple years ago, but you can buy these at Dollarama for about $3. Some of them are $4 Canadian, so a great price. It just is a wooden piece with a frame around it. Now I'm gonna make some special plaster paint. I've made this paint before. I've used it to paint a vase and it works really, really well. So to make this, I'm taking one part latex paint. I'm just using a latex paint that I have in my arsenal. It's just a white colored paint and then I'm going to add one part of Plaster of Paris. You can find Plaster of Paris at pretty much any home improvement store and I think a lot of craft stores have it as well. I'm going to create this really thick almost brownie batter consistency paint. One thing I love about this plaster paint is that it has fantastic coverage so I only need one coat to cover up this old artwork on this frame. I'm taking my paintbrush and just making a lot of textured strokes with my brush because I want to give it that really plaster stucco kind of look. Now that this frame is completely dry, I'm going to make even more plaster paint, but this time I'm going to make it extremely thick so it almost has a play-doh or a bread dough like consistency. So for this one, I'm adding about one part latex paint to about two parts plaster of Paris. And if you're doing this too, you can add a little bit of water if you want to smooth it out or thin it down and just play with the texture of this one. Now I'm using a spoon and I'm blobbing on this paint onto the canvas and trying to recreate this heart shape. It was really fun to play around with all the different tools. The spoon seemed to work best to make the initial shape. And then I'm using a brush to add some texture and give it that brush stroke look. I'm even getting in there with my hands to make the shape look exactly how I want it to. Now for this one, if you're doing it too, just make sure to lay the canvas flat to dry. Don't let it dry upright because what happens is your artwork might fall off, which is what happened to me. So lay it flat and it'll work fantastically. Now that this is dry, I think this turned out so neat. What a cool DIY. I loved playing with the plaster, playing with that medium and trying to get this really rustic looking heart shape. I love the tone on tone look and we're gonna place it here on the sideboard in the dining room. To buy all the supplies for this, including the dollar store frame, the plaster of Paris, and a little bit of sample paint, I think you could create this for less than $15 Canadian. A set of books with the same color of jacket and a nice solid color jacket looks really chic and is a great way to tie in some of the colors in your space. You can find these sorts of book sets at Pottery Barn. They're around $130, $150, but let's see if we can make something similar for cheaper with things that I have on hand. I'm just using these vintage books that I have and I'm using some of this really pretty light pink cardstock. I'm folding the cardstock and wrapping it about an inch around one side of the book cover and I'm just using some scotch tape to tape it down so that I can easily remove it later and reuse the books and reuse the paper again. 
I'm folding it around the spine of the book and slightly creasing it so that it stays in place and then taping it onto the other side of the book. If your piece of paper doesn't wrap all the way around the book like mine isn't doing here, no worries. You can just grab another piece of paper, tape it onto the back of the book and continue wrapping it around just like this. As long as your seam is on one of the covers of the book and not the spine or the pages side, it doesn't matter because we're just using this as a display. So now I'm gonna continue doing this to two more books so I have a set of three books in this beautiful pink color. Now you could stop here. I think they look fantastic as is, as a decorative item, but I'm gonna take my Cricut machine and I'm gonna make some Valentine's Day inspired words. So I'm just typing the words out here in Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna cut them onto some white permanent vinyl. Now I'm weeding out all of the excess vinyl, using some transfer tape, placing that over top, and then taking my little decal and putting that onto the spines of each of these books. If you wanna recreate this and you don't have a Cricut at home, no worries, you could use stickers from the dollar store or a craft store. There's lots of letter stickers available. As a finishing touch, I'm taking some raffia ribbon and somehow tying this in the most awkward way possible, but I finally get it and I'm gonna create this cute little tied book stack. I'm placing this on the side of my side table here in my dining room and I love how it has such a cute Valentine's look. So these books, Pottery Barns, were $130 plus. I used what I had on hand to make mine for $0, but if you were making these yourself and you needed to grab all of the supplies, you can get thrifted books, dollar store books, and I think you could make this one book stack for less than $10. These bowls from Pottery Barn were four for $40, but I think we can make them cheaper. I have these little heart-shaped bowls from Dollarama. That's the dollar store here in Canada. They were around $3 each. I did use them for a previous DIY where I used some Mod Podge and some napkins, and now I wanna reuse them for this DIY. So since this Mod Podge was water soluble, I'm just placing some water inside and scraping off the napkin. Now that these are all cleaned up and ready to reuse, I wanted to create a similar watercolor effect to the ones from Pottery Barn. So I thought I would use some nail polish. So one of my daughters has this beautiful light pink nail polish and I thought I would create that sort of see-through effect that the watercolor plates have. I'm just using the nail polish brush itself and brushing this on to the base of these heart-shaped bowls and I love how this is turning out. It has this watercolor look and I think it looks fantastic. Now once this is dry, you could use these bowls exactly how it, they are right now. If you wanna use them for food, you could put some sort of food safe coating on them. I'm just gonna use mine for decoration, so I'm not too worried about that. However, I'm gonna use my Cricut once again to make the word love for the bottom of these bowls. I'm gonna cut that out onto gold colored permanent vinyl. Now that my little decals are cut out, I'm just removing the excess vinyl. I'm using transfer tape, placing that on, and then transferring the love word onto the bottom of each of these bowls. These turned out so sweet. I think they make the perfect decoration for our sideboard, a lovely little decor item for Valentine's Day. Again, you could make them food safe with some sort of food safe coating and use them for snack bowls as well. So Pottery Barns were four for $40. I used what I had on hand to create these. If you had to buy all the supplies for these, I think you could make one of these for less than four dollars. Another thing that Pottery Barn always does well is their faux floral arrangements. So let's recreate one for cheaper. I have this bundle that I got off of Amazon. I use these peonies often for different DIYs. It's my favorite little bundle. I will link to it down in the description box below. So the trick here is to cut off each individual stem and then recreate a nice arrangement into a vase. You could use real water or you could use that fake hardened water. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below to make this look even more realistic. However, I thought it looks great just as is. A faux floral arrangement like this is a fantastic addition to the sideboard. You can make one of these for $20 Canadian or less and just reuse it all the time for all sorts of different occasions. I'm also adding some more candles and a few little DIYs that I've made previously from dollar store items to our dining room and it's all done. So as a reminder, here's what the dining room looked like before. And here's what it looks like now, just simple and pretty, romantic, and ready for Valentine's Day. 
My girls were thrilled when they saw the Valentine's Day tree and all of the decorations. What do you think? Oh wow, I love the um, wooden um, things, oh, the wooden hearts. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below which of these DIYs was your favorite. I would love to know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next right up here.